Yo, I woke up this morning. I was like, damn. I woke up at like like an hour and a half ago. I was like, all right, I can't be asleep on this podcast. You know what I mean? I played a little two K, watched a little NBA highlights to humble myself, and you know here yeah. we are. Well, no, listen, try, I do it every week. I show a pair of half awake. Trust me, you're fine. <laughs> you're totally fine. <laughs> so that's so yeah, Kirk. I mean, you're here. At, you were like three minutes late, but that's 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 early for you on a Saturday. Yeah, I was like, oh good, I'm like four minutes late. That's fine. I'm on schedule. Property box. I'm here. <laughs> Live in the flesh. And we got a guest today. We do have a guest today. Oh my goodness. Today, today on the show, good good friend of mine. I just found I just found out he's actually in uh in Washington State right now. He's not he's not in New York where I thought he was. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, the host of the Revisionary podcast. Yep. Um, give it up for Juan Carlos, everybody. Woo! Yeah. Juan Carlos on the West Coast. You guys. Yeah, it's, man. It's, it's revisionary, right? Or is it? How do you, is, is that what it? Revisionary yeah, podcast. The revisionary podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were just on it. You just slayed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I hate to listen. I didn't know if it was vis- revisionist or visionary. I you could let that one slide. You could yeah, right? you could have just played 50 <laughs> 50 <laughs> and gotten away with it. You would have you could have said nothing and I wouldn't have known that you, you so right. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. So, from my understanding, it's, it's you know, again, thanks for you know, being on with us and all that. You're sure. in the West Coast. Um, now with your podcast, tell us a little bit about that in terms of what how it goes about. So, it's it's a pretty interesting concept in my opinion. So the way it works is uh, we bring on guests. A lot of them are comedians, but not all of them. I've had uh, recordings with uh, former NFL players. I've had uh, storytellers on. Um, and I'm branching out. I'm in talks with some reality stars who, you know, have agreed to come on, but haven't been able to schedule it and stuff like that. But the way Are you talking about Flavor Flav? <laughs> are you talking about Flavor Flav right now? Are you going to get Flavor Flav on show? <laughs> So according to my lawyers, I'm not allowed to release any information. I'm just kidding. All right, all right. He's talking about pumpkin. <laughs> Listen, I mean, it may be honey something, but you know, whatever. We don't need to talk about that right now. Um, but yeah, they uh, come on and they tell nonfiction stories about their lives in which they wish something had gone a little bit differently. And after they tell their story, I give them an opportunity to retell the same story. But this time they get to change any facts or details about the story. And then we discuss the impact of the changes they've made. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. profound. You put some thought, you put some thought into it with the podcast, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's like that's you could really was... change your life that way. That's... Yeah. Yeah, you really you really uh put some effort into to your podcast. I'm not gonna lie, man. You, I when I came on your podcast, I had to fill out a Google Doc. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still mad about that Google. It wasn't even that bad. <laughs> I was like, I just want to tell jokes, man. I hate putting out people work. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. listen. Well, it's funny because a lot of people, most people will actually refuse to fill out. They're like, I'm not doing this, bro. Like, we're, we're not doing this. And I'm like, all right. And with the exception of like a handful of people, like Alan being the exception and a few other people who come on, consistently people who don't fill out the, like the Google forms tend to have the worst episodes because they're like all over the place. I'm like, you uh, don't yeah. know what you're doing. Yeah. Trying to help the guest out beforehand. No, we yeah. totally get that. No, I, I understood it. I understood that. Like I, I told, I even told my girl, I was like, man, I, I'm about to be in my man pockets, but I don't feel like filling out this joint. Like, I don't feel like, and she was like, he's probably trying to understand your story more and have a better, she was like saying all the right things. And I was like, I guess you're right, but I just don't feel like filling it out. <laughs> you know? I've never met a group of people like comedians who get mad about organization. I'm like, damn, we just trying to be organized. I'm saying, trying to involved in this world. <laughs> Because it's against our brand. <laughs> no, but look, man, I had I had a good time on your on your podcast, man. I actually I told a story about how when I was a kid we went to Disney World, but we didn't get to go inside. Right. You know it's truly so, a sad story. The <laughs> story always stuck with me. It's, it's not that sad. bad. But I tell you what, ever since he told me that story, I swear to God, I've been playing the lottery every week, and I'm like I'm like you know when you make your like list of things you're gonna do if you win the lottery. Uh-huh. My ninth thing is like I'm taking Alan to Disney World. Like I just have to go to Disney World. <laughs> That's why I appreciate it. Oh, good. Yeah. Now, are you originally from the West Coast or are you no. just up there now? Okay. No, uh, I'm originally from New York, uh, born and raised. I'm, I'm the like weird, like, because apparently we don't exist, like Native New Yorkers. Um, mm. Born in Harlem, raised in the Bronx, you know. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I've been out here for I've been out on the West Coast for a few months. I uh, followed my fiance uh, for work. Oh. She uh, turned around and said to me once, she goes, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I'm like, what's up? She goes, you follow me for my career. You can quit your day job and I will support your comedy career. I was like, say less. And she, and wow. she started giving me more time. No, 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 no. Stop talking. You <laughs> said you're going to support my comedy <laughs> career. I don't got to pay rent. I don't got to pay nothing. That's on you. That was Damn. Your That's what's so up. Congratulations that is, on that, that is dynamic. Love. That is love right there. <laughs> And the engagement too, um, but yeah, mainly that dynamic. That's pretty nice. So, wait, how long you been out on the West Coast? So we, so I actually, uh, it's weird because uh, I moved out here and I left New York in the middle of May. We drove across the country, and uh, it was like the height of Corona, which was weird. You know, coming from New York, you're like everyone's all like masked up. You know, everyone's yeah. like being all scared, and then we hit the middle of the country, and there is no mask. Like it was so <laughs> uncomfortable for me, bro. I remember, like, this was, like, I'm talking, like, May 18th now. Remember, like, Corona started, like, what, March? 15th yeah, around March like 13th. So, so it was May 18th. Like, we're talking, like, in the height of the pandemic. Like, people were just dying left and right in New York. I got to Montana, and uh, first off, that was my first mistake going to Montana, which was surprisingly yeah. nice. I, by the way. Scenically, it's, I'm sure it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. I have this theory, by the way, that there's certain people, I'm not going to say who, who try to keep her certain hidden gems from the rest of us. But telling white us people. that you know, I'ma say it. White people. <laughs> I'ma say it. I don't bite my tongue. You know that white people. But you could continue your story. <laughs> but it was the gem. Montana's beautiful. But anywho, mm. we get out there. It's like May nineteenth, eighteenth, or something like that. And like we go inside a restaurant, and like they legit brought us inside the restaurant. And this dude is like serving food. I'm like, I feel like I'm doing something illegal. Like this don't feel right. You know? Yo, what you mean? were. <laughs> yeah, I think you were doing something illegal. <laughs> no, there were no laws in Montana. Montana was like. COVID is not real. It doesn't exist. It's a hoax. Yeah, dog. Damn. Same thing happened to me when I went to, in August, um, I went to North Carolina to the, to the Outer Banks. Like, my family, we go down there to vacation um, every year. And this yeah. year, we, we went down there, you know what I'm saying? And the first restaurant we went to, we thinking everything's going to be takeout. You know, we're like, you know, it's, it's, it's eight of us. We have two tables outside that will work for us. They're like, no, it's fine. You, we have tables available on the inside. We're like, oh, the <laughs> inside? Uh. But, but, like, ain't nobody want to be like, we, 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 ate, we ate on the inside. I'm not really? going to lie. Wow. I'm not going to lie. We were, look, we were, I, listen, this was two months ago. I'm alive, so I'm, I'm fine. But, like, it was, we ate, like, far, it was social. This is like a mother. Like, we ate right. far from everybody else. <laughs> we were, like, on the, we were on the, on the, like, the, on the bay. So the windows is open. We was getting fresh air, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> pressured the whole family. It's not even like a prayer pressure, like, one person. It's like, no, the whole Massenburg clan, we're going to be pressured into eating indoors. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's real rap. The middle of the country did not care about their own. I also, I also, I had to drive to Alabama and back one weekend. I think I told you the story, but I was going through, was it Virginia? And I stopped at Waffle House. I, I rolled up, got high, and I went in the Waffle House. And it was just no mask. They were just eating perfectly fine. Everybody looking at me like I'm crazy. I don't know if it was because I had a mask on or because I smelled like weed. Like, I don't know, but they were like <laughs> staring at me. But it, the middle of the country does not care about That's the thing, like in the beginning of all this too. It's like when you go into places with a mask and you don't have one, you never know. It's like, are they judging me for the mask or because I'm black? Like, I, <laughs> like I'm like, I can't, I can't tell either way I'm he's, getting stares. Like he's dangerous and safe. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't know what to think. He's safe in all the wrong ways. Yeah, man. Driving through those driving through those red states is definitely <laughs> not some it was not wild. something you want to do. Remember, uh, before oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say, you know, because we're gonna be, you know, I, I sense that little segue uh that Alan was trying to make just <laughs> a little now. Attempt. Gonna, I tried gonna, to attempt. Yeah. <laughs> he did a little <laughs> joke right now. Um but before we do that, I want to know two crucial questions. One, is your fiance white? Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. How, um, wait, wait, <laughs> before you get to the second question, I, Why'd you ask that? That was the most I'm random seeing, Well, I'm <laughs> seeing some parallels. Tell? Yes. Um, just like, <laughs> no, just from like, you know, I'm seeing parallels. One, I'm from the Bronx. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, man, Bronx right there. And then yeah. I was like, all right, what's the other parallel? He said he was engaged. Fiance must be white. So, so here's the thing. Hold on. Hold on. I, I feel the need to... Defend yourself. This. Yeah, no, I really do. I, like, I don't know why I feel defensive, but I feel defensive right now. Um, <laughs> I've never dated a white woman before ever in my life. Every girl that I've ever dated before has been Latina, like straight up just Latinas. I mean, you know, I went to college and, uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, 
your boy I played the slots, if you get what I'm saying. But, <laughs> you know, I might have been the model UN, you know what I mean? Just reaching uh-huh. diplomacy with everybody, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, I did not, you know, I did not discriminate, but I have never dated a white person before. So it was an interesting experience oh. dating a white person. And it's been a learning experience. But she, like, you know, race aside, she is one of the most wonderful humans I've ever met in my entire life, which is why I had to get down on one knee. I did not believe in marriage before I met her. I never thought I'd, you know, I'd want to get married, but you know, when you meet someone special, you you know. You are just doing your nuptials right now, bro? Like that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> is she in the next room right now? Uh, <laughs> dog, I told you she pays my rent. I need to I need to say what I need to say. You know what I mean? She's like, you can chase your dreams as long as you brown nose all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bro, I gotta say what I gotta say to you know not be homeless. I mean the homeless rate in Washington is pretty high, so you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> oh damn, damn. Oh, this is good though. This is That's good though, Juan. I don't know if you, like Kirk's talking about the parallels, you know. Kirk, Kirk was engaged as well, so yeah. you know, also yeah. to a white woman, you yeah. know. So it's yeah, it, so he could tell, he could smell it. Yeah, surely. I, I was like, oh, I sense some interracial romance going on right now. Mm. <laughs> Are you mixed? Mm. Yeah, I'm black and Indian. Ah. It causes a whole thing. Don't ask Alan and follow up question. Uh, just, <laughs> just, just, Kirk, Kirk, look, Kirk is black. Okay. Kirk likes to say that he's, uh, what's that word? Ambiguous. He likes to say he's rich. Yeah, I like to state my actual racial DNA. Yes, I do like to do that. I mean, like, um, you're like Kamala Harris. <laughs> exactly like her. She's from Jamaica, like her family is from Jamaica, too. I think her mom was born there. So, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of comparisons there, yeah. um, which, you know, are uh, potentially our first female vice president. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. But this is the thing, though. I've been hearing a lot of people say Kamala Harris is black. And not too many people saying she's Asian, so I, that's that's all I want to say. So when you when you have black and then you mix with something else, especially not white, you're recognized in society as black. Like, yes, on paper, yeah, but society, the cops, they see you as black. You know what I'm saying? That's so, why do I have to answer yeah. what society says? Yeah, right. Why can't I just be like Kirk society? Like, yo, part of society is Kirk is in, and Kirk's giving you his views. Shout to him. Also, also, I'm not going to lie to you, Alan, that's a little problematic because by your line of thinking, right, by your line of thinking, the cops think that a lot of black people are criminals. So by that line of thinking, are you a criminal? No, you're not. You can't let society dictate what you are. You are what you are and how you identify. Tell right, them, so Tell I, know, I know who I am and I know that I'm not a criminal, but right. that, doesn't, that doesn't make how society sees me differently. That's not a, I'm not saying what society sees is correct. I never said that. I'm just telling you how they see me. Yeah, I mean, no, but what I'm saying is, you know what I mean, like, I think on some levels, we need to, like, try to, like, uh, like, clear off all these, like, societal notions and, like, try to clean them up, because I think that they're harmful and dangerous, and they lead to dangerous stereotypes. I mean, that's why, you know, uh, black men get shot on record numbers, it's because, you know, there's that stereotype in society automatically thinks that you're dangerous, or that we're dangerous, or, you know what I mean, or that we're going to cause yeah, some I agree. sort of harm. I was trying to just get me shot. I That's agree. really what it is. I, don't try I, to I can I can agree that the the society stereotypes lead to a lot of negative things for black people, but that doesn't mean that I can't observe and see what those societal stereotypes are. So I I can sit here and say that the cops are wrong for killing a black person, but I also can say like, well, the cops see us all as black. That's 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 not a that's not a I'm not perpetuating perpetuating stereotypes. I think would be me acting it out. That'd be me being a criminal. But what if mm. I think about, but if I think about, say, if I say, hey, those people think we're criminals, I don't think that's me perpetuating it. Perpetuating to me is actually doing that criminal activity. That's that's, that's me. But I understand what you're saying, and yeah. I agree. Like, yes, me me putting it out there in the, in the universe is definitely perpetuated to to an extent. But it ain't me stop talking about it. It ain't gonna stop it from happening. I think me talking about it is probably what will stop it. Addressing it head on. But this, and then there's the other thing is that that kind of rhetoric is very harmful to uh, people who come from uh, mixed race backgrounds. Because mm-hmm. I, do you have, are you, are you mixed? No, I no. am black. He does See, not know the struggle. He, he is, that's what I'm saying. You don't understand what it's like to be a mixed person in this world, which is really difficult. Learn me, you don't teach belong me. Teach, any, teach, teach actually, me. Like, when you're mixed, you don't belong in any space. Like, you know what I mean? Like you go out and try to hang out with black people. They're like, you're not black enough. You go hang out with whatever your other side is. And you're like, oh, you're not one of us. 
I was hanging out some like, white so people the other day and they threw marbles at me. I trust, <laughs> trust me. I know what it's like. You, you know, know you know what I'm talking about? Because like, it, and like, I, I talk about this all the time because I'm mixed in a completely different way than the average person. Which so is, for the people, you're you're black and Dominican. No, so that's what I'm saying. So let me get this. I'm 100% Dominican. I'm Latino, okay. Hispanic, right? That right. is my. You really are from the Bronx. <laughs> he said you really are from the Bronx. <laughs> I really am from the Bronx. But if DR. we're talking race, right? Like if we're talking race, I took the ancestry DNA thing to look at it, but I could also look at my grandparents, which is what I really should have done. Because if we're talking race, I'm 60% of African descent, 30% of European descent, 10% of indigenous, like native descent. And both of my parents are mixed people. Which is what I'm saying. Like, it's a whole extra layer. Because people are like, you're black. And I was like, well, I, I mean, yeah, sure. You know, a- absolutely. Like, I'm not saying otherwise. But then, you know, I also have white grandparents. So, like, where, you know what I mean? And it's you don't like, want to ignore that part of it. That yeah, also is weird. a part of your, like, DNA and your makeup. It's like, you could identify with black culture in a lot of ways. But that doesn't mean that you can also identify with another part of you that maybe isn't as uh prominent to like the eye when they first see you sort of thing um well, even, i totally hear that even even that like uh and yo this is i'm probably gonna get canceled for this so i'm just oh boy okay. I'm, if go. anybody's gonna cancel this episode <laughs> it's definitely me but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> this is it this is it so the one thing i've always struck like like you know like people bring up that argument all the time like yeah you identify with black culture right but i feel like black culture is very american-centric right like you know there's yeah. a specific black culture that has to do with you know americans like black americans in this country my parents are from the dominican republic which is a completely different culture so i kind of grew up in that and i feel like even with black culture like i have to google black culture you know what i mean like when people are talking about like quote-unquote black stuff more often than not i'm googling that stuff so i was like can i really claim that culture like that doesn't feel like it's okay for me to do that you know what i mean in some respect like you know if there's like nuances and all that stuff i i i I recognize that black culture is very Americanized in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Um, it's also very large. Um, so like when someone says something along the lines of black culture, it's like, oh, you're saying something along the lines of like Hispanic culture where it's like, I, there's some things that I need to Google and there's some things I just know from being around and yeah. having family members. So there definitely is multiple dimensions when you're mixed. Um, <laughs> I think like both sides or all sides rather uh, just, can't really fully recognize yeah. um and sometimes perhaps because in their race like if you're just 100 percent black um you're used to being uh just kind of like oh yeah you're black and sometimes maybe pigeonholed or just like held to like that one layer so maybe that's what's like oh then that it makes sense to do that to other people yeah. sometimes absolutely yeah can, can i tell you something here's a quick story if you guys don't mind me sharing I was, uh, I worked in an office job, right? Um, I was working in finance back in New York before I left. And uh, as we're sitting there, this guy, like, you know, there's like six African-Americans, like to be specific, you know what I mean? Like American black people in the office and me. And this guy decides that uh, he's going to throw a black history event. He goes, Uh you're black, just come through. It's a black history event. We're going to plan for black history. I'm like, great. This is phenomenal, right? Like I'm excited to be part of this planning crew. And a lot of people don't know this, but Dominican Independence Day is in February. It's February 27th. Oh. So he's like, yeah, you know, I didn't throw know out, yeah, he was like, throw out all your ideas. Let's plan this. I'm like, cool. He was like, you're Dominican, you're black, you know, just, just throw these ideas. I'm like, all right, cool. So I start throwing all these ideas out of Dominican things that we could do for Black History Month. I'm like, oh, we should do this dance. We should do this thing, learn this history, da 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 da. Like, I'm throwing all these things out. And like, halfway through, the guy go, looks at me and stops. He goes, yo, 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 stop, 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 stop. We're not doing that here. I'm like, what you mean? You said black history. I'm trying to, you know, share my history with y'all. And he was like, no, 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 no. We're doing, you know, like African-American history. Like, that's really the focus. That's why you're here for no other reason. I was like, God damn. Uh, so <laughs> which is it? I thought we were doing awful. black history. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he don't, he don't know that. So he don't know that the Dominicans are just a different boat stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all... <laughs> right, right, no, no. And like, I've, I've constantly said that. Like, that's actually a joke I tell on stage. I was like, you know, uh, Dominicans are just black people who got here on a layover. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it took a little bit. But I think the they reason were on I was a buddy pass. Buddy pass. <laughs> yeah, basically. They, but, uh, like, I think he was just mad because in his point of view, like, I was taken away from, like, what he was trying to do, which was push like African American culture, but that wasn't what I was trying to do. I was just trying to add layers of my culture into it as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting with that. The idea of like a uh, black culture being synonymous with American culture is interesting to me. 
yeah. of like it's like a lot of it is uh you know not even necessarily rooted in, in american culture but has created american culture when you come to when you look at like different types of art music movies it's just a lot of it is has such a huge impact and that's why it's such a shame to see how black people can be treated that's why you hear people in america I don't know if you hear people talk about the the diaspora nowadays. Like you hear a lot of people always bring up the word diaspora. You know, that's that's because a lot of black people are only focused on the black people in America and not the black people throughout yeah. the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like which is problematic. Right. So that's that's what I'm saying. So like everybody's trying to, you know, focus on like speaking for the diaspora and making sure black people all across the world, no matter where wherever you wherever your boat landed, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. we're gonna we're gonna look out for you and you know, stick together as a as a people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that I think that that's a big deal. I think people need to, like the guy from your office, he needs to realize that like Dominicans are the, the same thing, bro. Like, it's, yes, you have, I think the cultures are different. I think yeah. black American culture is, is different than right. Dominican culture. But when we're talking about like race, yeah. I feel like it's this, I feel like it's the same. Like that's- A lot of struggles in there, man. I, I, I would say one <laughs> last thing too, if you guys don't mind on, on this topic, like uh, I, the whole uh, Dominicans are black thing. Like, yo, there are a lot of black Dominicans, right? That's a fact. Like, I'm not saying otherwise. But also keep in mind that the Dominican Republic is a super mixed country. And there are a lot of white Dominicans, a lot of Asian Dominicans, a lot of Indian Dominicans. Oh, yeah. group is all together. When you say Dominicans are black, you're giving my colonizers the ability to be like, oh, yeah, we're black too. It's fine, right? We can say the N-word. And I'm like, nah, yeah. man. Nah, man. That's, <laughs> That's not uh... cool. It always trips me up when, like, I see, like, a white Jamaican. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot that can happen. It's like, you know more Pat Wall than me. That's that's what's up, Brad. (laughs) Like, when I was growing up, I didn't understand how Sean Paul was light-skinned. Remember, just give me the light. I was like, how is he light-skinned? I thought all Jamaicans, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I thought all Jamaicans were just, like, dark-skinned with dread. I just thought that's what it was. Technically, it's a nationality versus ethnicity. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you got some right. white Jamaicans. Um, I'm curious before I, I, before we uh, go off into it too much. What part of the Bronx are you from? Highbridge. Highbridge. Okay. Yeah. You know about familiar? Highbridge? No. Is that like towards South? So Highbridge is uh, ironically uh, maybe my parents did this on purpose. I don't know. But it's like you know where uh, Washington Heights is. Yes, like towards you know, Harlemish. Yeah. You know the 181st Bridge. No. Okay. If you go into Washington Heights on 181st, there's a bridge that connects to the Bronx. Okay. High Bridge is that first neighborhood. The southernmost tip of High Bridge is Yankee Stadium. Oh, okay. Like towards Musk first. Yeah, but it goes all the way up to a university near Fordham Road. Oh, that makes sense because you're from Harlem originally, right? You were born in Harlem. Yeah, I was born in Harlem originally. That makes sense. Um, so, like, it's like, it's weird. High Bridge is weird because it's like, uh, there's a lot of Dominicans that live there because of the heights, because the heights are so close. Like, okay. I used to spend every weekend in the heights. But also, it's become famous recently uh, because uh, Cardi B's from High Bridge. Oh, um, uh, I a, know that. A boogie from uh, with the hoodies from Highbridge, oh, and uh, my son, the generals from Highbridge. Oh, okay. So That's what. Represent. I'm uh, I'm on the north side. No one ever comes and visits us. Are We're on one eighty third, one eighty third in Lauren Place. It's like towards like Ooh. Woodlawn. Yeah, like if you had to like take the four, no, you'd no, have to I, stop I and then take. Area. Yeah, neighborhood. <laughs> I, I do not go into those neighborhoods. That's like the backwoods, like right near Fordham. Yeah, no, it's re- it's literally like right next to the university. I used to uh, I used to do uh, community work in, th- in that area back in the day. You know, working. With he's he sold drugs there. That's what that means. <laughs> 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 That's like community work. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done community work there. No, you probably. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's what's up. You painted a mural. <laughs> no, that's no, cool. No, no. <laughs> I, I used to run uh, day uh, day camps for uh, kids in the summer and make sure they stayed out of trouble. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> the exact opposite. <laughs> and, and I used to take summer use, and you know what I mean. So they they couldn't sell drugs. Put a little money in their pocket. You know, back in the day. <laughs> Um, I'm curious on this, and we, trust me, listeners, we're going to talk about the politics. We're going to do it. I trust you. Um, uh, you know, you've been doing. You know, you're not just a podcaster. Like you mentioned, you also do a comedy as well. Yeah. Um, have you been able to perform while out in the West Coast? So I, I, I said I was going to stop snitching on myself because people listen to this stuff. I'm going to snitch on myself <laughs> one more time. This is the last time I'm snitching. It's never the one last time. It's never. Right? The one last time. <laughs> I'm going to keep snitching on myself. So technically, <laughs> technically comedy is illegal out here it is illegal to perform uh, there are no live performances allowed in the state of washington wow um i Soft. however found a little underground speakeasy show <laughs> and uh you really may are snitch on yourself right now <laughs> no no i'm snitching i'm 100 percent snitching i'm being hella light-skinned right now um that <laughs> 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 um 
And uh, I was like, I, can't, I couldn't stay away from the stage. You know what I'm saying? So I was performing there weekly. But then we were doing this for a few months. Then the media kind of got wind of it. And, like, there was a media storm at said bar. And they were uh, threatening to remove their liquor license. Because they got caught five times. Wow. And the owner was like, nah, we're still doing comedy in here. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so that, that got shut down pretty quickly. And, uh, you know. Again, I can't snitch, so I may or may not be still performing at a different place. But you know who knows what's going on right now, right? <laughs> so was that Damn, indoor? Well, that was well. indoor? Oh, it was indoor. Indoor, no mask, no social sure. distancing. We were just going in. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I've, I still – I talked to Alan about this a lot. Like, I still have anxiety with it. Like, I'm still not fully ready to perform indoors. Right. Um, so I still – like, I haven't performed indoors since February. So it's been all, like, outdoor stuff. Um, which before used to be like, oh, outdoor shows, garbage. It's one of the, it's one of the, the right. worst places to perform comedy in terms of case you can't perform like yeah. uh, all the settings and factors that you can't control. But so far it hasn't been so bad. But indoors though, yeah. you're kind of a wild boy for that one. Listen, dog, I've been doing outdoors since the corona, since the corona happened, right? But you know we're in the northeast over here, so it's like it's getting colder yeah. and. People been asking me to do indoor shows and I've been I've been turning them down. But like how how long? Like how long do I keep doing this, bro? Cause like yeah. I love comedy. Like do people doing indoor shows, but I'm also terrified of corona still. It's gonna it's it's gonna be a certain like we had a hundred and we had a hundred thousand new cases of corona like two yeah. days ago. You know what I'm saying? So that's like, yeah. with the numbers coming up, that's the thing. I feel like I would do indoor if it's like really worth it. Like if it's just like a regular showcase or show. That's something for me. I'm like, oh, I'll hold off. But if it's like something big, like an opportunity, or something that like I just always wanted to do, yeah, I'll definitely entertain it. Yeah. So hear me out. Hear me out. What if you roll into the room? Because this is what I was doing. Rolling in. First off, keep your mask on. Do not take your mask off. Do not come within six feet of anybody. Hand sanitize before you touch the mic. Hand sanitize after you're done. And the only time you take off your mask is when you're telling jokes. After you've hand sanitized everything. That's right. how I was doing it, and I was dipping. Would you do that? I see, so look, I was doing, I do that at outdoor shows. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's what I do on outdoor shows, you know? But it's my thing, right? Just tell me if I'm tripping or not, because I don't know. Um, the ventilation, like I've heard that like, like old bars and stuff had bad ventilation and people breathing up into the shit, like just being, people laughing, ha, 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 you know, spraying their fumes. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I could be paranoid, but like, like I, I got two, I got two young kids, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to get sick and bring them back to them. So yeah. I kind of, I gotta kind of move different. Like if I didn't have kids, bro, I probably would have had Corona by now. Like <laughs> <laughs> you'd be out here in these streets. <laughs> yeah, I'd be catching flights and everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd be in Tulum, Mexico, right now. You know what I'm saying? That's but fun. like the end, the end, like that's that's the part that freaked me out about the indoors. Like I know, but you can stay socially distanced and you can hand sanitize. But the, the shit in the air, like, can you just do, do your thing with your mask and just leave? Like, I probably would do that. Like, I, like, like Kirk said, like, like you said, Kirk, I feel like I'm rambling, but like, like you said, if it's a great opportunity, it's a yeah. good, a good paying job. I might have to take the risk, you know. But yeah. I ain't doing no, no, it's, no, no, no showcase where I get two beers. Like, I'm, I'm not doing. Yeah, that. no, like on Mike's songs. That's how I felt. Like most things, like in the summertime, COVID was still around. Uh, you know, your boy likes to do a little travel. So he went to upstate New York to a tiny house, did a little Airbnb. You know how I get down. Um, and then on the way back, I passed a waterfall. Now, yeah, the waterfall is a little crowded. People are excited to see that waterfall. But I wasn't going to pass on swimming in the waterfall because of COVID. It was this majestic thing. So I decided to make that choice. Okay, I want to get wet in this waterfall versus my safety. So sometimes you got to, like, kind of do the balance sort of thing. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I think I, I just think that during the winter time, I'm probably gonna be doing a lot more like uh, virtual mm -hmm. shows. I do a lot online because I need to, to I gotta work that muscle. Or if I don't, yeah. I think I feel depressed. Like I feel like I'm sad. Like I need to <laughs> hear people laughing at things I think about. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I gotta do it. So this this winter is gonna be a telling time for me. Y'all, I'm y'all gonna see it when I when I post that first indoor show. They're gonna be like, oh, he he had enough. He went off the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> he went off the deep end. <laughs> I want to say something to y'all too because I don't want y'all to think that I'm out here being reckless. Part of the reason why I'm doing this one this one indoor show that I was doing illegally is because the same comedians went, and I I like let it rock for like three weeks first and saw that none of them caught COVID. 
So I was like, okay, they must be being safe in other parts of their life. And that's the only reason I felt comfortable being around yeah. them consistently. No, no judgment on no, our end. Yeah, like, yeah. No, no, right. no, no judgment. I no, felt no. <laughs> no. no, no. Look, my younger, look, my younger brother, right, is like a, a rapper. He's a he curates events. He's a a singer. For the last three months, he's been having sold out shows in the middle of Philly. Okay, like this nice. nigga. And I, I text him. I text him like, "Yo, bro, how'd your show go?" Just, you're just checking on him. You know what I'm saying? Because he out ain't no mask anywhere. <laughs> no mask. He even my brother texted me. He said, "Hey, bro, I want to come. I want to come see the kids." I said, "Well, you gonna have to quarantine for two weeks <laughs> because <laughs> you're not coming to see my kids." Like after that show, I just so he had a sold out show with like, and they, I mean he got niggas in the audience too. Like he's just, <laughs> he's just niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like thugs. Like <laughs> like you know they not taking all the precautions, bro. And I don't, yeah. I don't care if I'm being stereotypical or not. I see them and they ain't got masks on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like. So I ain't judging you, because my mom, <laughs> you I'm just, just won't saying. be able to meet his kids. You can't meet his kids, but he's <laughs> yeah, not yeah. judging you in any I, way. I, I want to meet his kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in case I have to take him to Disney World when I hit the Powerball. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I gotta make sure the cool. <laughs> yeah, it's package deal. They're all coming. Right, we'll take a risk for Disney World. <laughs> yeah, so I want to take a little dip into this, a little risk, uh, in saying that uh, we're gonna pop in a little one of these little segments that we do here at Property Bonics. Uh, oh, people shit. I here. Forgot to, I forgot to tell Juan about the segments. It's we all get... good, Juan. We'll, we'll like... <laughs> so, Juan, we we like to let people know like what we're getting into and things that we like, things that we enjoy, things sure. that we want to recommend. You know, whether it's like you know a book, you know, a new pillowcase you got going on that you really like. Yeah. You want to recommend that. Right. So, we're, and we call those uh, recommendations here on the show. Prop suggestions. This is some prop suggestions. <laughs> I never have a suggestion ready, right? Ever. So, right, right, so right. usually what happens? Usually what happens is Kirk will suggest something to the people, and he'll suggest why, and that gives me enough time to come up with a suggestion of my own, right? Mm -hmm. So we can do that for you too, Juan. So Kirk can oh. go. Kirk can go. Can I can go. <laughs> why can't you go first? You just explain the process. Like you can. Go, <laughs> you you know the process. Because I just told you I'm never ready. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> my suggestion, um, so we're recording this on a Saturday. We're snitching on ourselves now. We're recording this on a Saturday morning. Um, and, you know, it's going to be nighttime later on. I suggest when you're listening to this to go back and uh, watch the monologue of Dave Chappelle hosting Saturday Night Live tonight. Uh, I think it's, you know, I'm not going to hype anything up and, and all that stuff. But I mean, that's my guy. It's going to be a banger. Uh, so I, if you're listening to this in the future, uh, go on YouTube and, uh, you know, First, rate us. Do that. That'd be kind of nice. But then also go check out the Dave Chappelle's monologue for Saturday Night Live tonight. Yeah, last time he did the monologue was also a year ago, right? No, uh, no it was like no, four, four years ago. Four years, yeah. That's what I meant. Then on the last election process. Time goes by when you're having fun, dog. Time goes by when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ton, tons of fun, yeah, during, yeah. The last four, during the last four years. Um, so look, here go, here, go, here go my suggestion that I think the people should do, right? And this is uh, this is good. De definitely with the holidays coming up, um, I think people should do more edibles. Like I feel like that, that's I'm telling you because <laughs> Kirk, Kirk, you feel me on this one, man. Because like I know that people don't want to be. I'm not saying I'm not saying Kirk out here doing edibles all crazy, but I'm saying you, you understand. <laughs> I'm saying that I suggest the edibles during the holidays because that way you ain't gotta be around your family members smelling like like weed. Like when you burn when you smoking <laughs> weed, they be like. What's that smell? Why are your eyes red? Now they gonna think your eyes are red because you just crying because you're happy to see them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> so you gotta, you got. I think people. I suggest people get them edibles. You know what I'm saying? I, recently, right. I had to, I had the Skittle ones. Recently, man, I've been. Uh, <laughs> no, I know what you when you say uh, that. I know what you mean. I definitely know what you mean in the sense that, like, I tell you my Christmas story. I'll keep it brief. So, like, um, my cousin O'Shane, he came to visit us from Jamaica. My brother, um, Malagras, we're all there around Christmas time. And they all smoke and all that stuff. So, they're smoking. And I wasn't. I was not smoking. My mom came into the room where everyone's smoking but me. And for whatever reason, all the blame came on me. It was like, Kirk, I expected more from you. It was like, I, I didn't do I'm spending time with my family. It was a whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah, this sounds like a prop suggestion that I could give <laughs> O'Shane and Malagras. Next time you go to Christmas, just bring a whole bag of edibles for your family. <laughs> <laughs> that would be easier. Um, All right, you got anything for anything to suggest, Juan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I okay. 
two things. Number one is uh, I've recently come across these like really soft shirts with all these like funny slogans on them. Uh, by this like guy, you know, Alan Massenberg, you know, yeah. Master. No, I'm just like, I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> I love that recommendation. That might be the best recommendation I've ever heard. So yeah. sure you got on that one. <laughs> so you see, you see the shirt, Kirk. Yeah. Kirk got the same shirt. Kirk got the Kirk got the red one with the white writing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So many parallels. So many parallels between Juan and Black I. and red all day. Um, <laughs> you know what? That's probably going to get me killed out in these streets, so forget that I said that. <laughs> Black and red all day. I'm in Washington. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The mean streets out here. No, look, um, producer, producer Pat said he's ordering his hoodie today. That's what I'm talking about, producer Pat. Do it. Yeah. Do it. No, no, no. Um, so here's the thing. I... Uh, I, you know, like, I never really liked beer growing up. You know, going to college, they had all those, like, natty lights, and that stuff was nasty. And then yeah. my parent, well, my dad used to drink, like, Coronas and Heinekens at home, because that's what Dominicans drink, Coronas and Heinekens. <laughs> but since being out here in Washington, I've been discovering, like, craft beers, because they have all these breweries. Yeah. So what I'm really recommending out here is if you haven't had a Hefeweizen, go ahead, go get yourself a nice Hefeweizen, you know, and enjoy your holidays, you know what I mean? Nice, something yeah. tasty that takes the edge off, you know. What I'm that saying? nice little German stuff. wheat in you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's a nice one. That's a good yeah. recommendation. I like yeah. that. That's a, that's, right. a, that's a good recommendation because it's it's way better than natty. Natty ice tastes like salsa water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, don't knock, some, don't knock natty ice, bro. That's like that's nostalgia right there. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had plenty of good nights off natty ice, but trust me, it it don't taste the best. Either. Bro, I may get some natty ice tonight. <laughs> I may make it a natty night, watching Dave Chappelle with a natty. That'd be kind of cool. Damn, I may actually do that. Juan Carlos will have me at my family drinking beer and eating edibles. I'm going to be fucked up on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Christmas is going to be, you know, uh, going to be interesting with family dynamics, uh, everything going on. That's right, people. I know you came here to hear us talk about politics. We're going to dive into that finally. Let's do it. So the 2020 presidential election uh, is still taking place. <laughs> yeah this is a this is a long one this is a, a long one it started on tuesday uh we are on saturday and votes are still being tallied and i believe uh five or six battleground states yeah. um, P- pennsylvania georgia arizona nevada i think that's it is alaska one of them Did they get all nah, that ain't no battleground state that's that's no it's going red no, it's definitely going red, but like I was like, I, I don't know if they've completed it yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, those are like the big ones. Um, and kind of the narrative right now, or not even narrative, but like that's straight up what's happening, is, um, you know, a lot of those states that were leaning towards Donald Trump. Uh, we saw on Tuesday, the map was looking quite red. Um, well, with producer, a lot Pat, producer Pat just said, got a text from my brother, PA is finished. Joe Biden is the Whoa. president. It's oh, lit. Wow. It, it, Whoa. Yeah, just hasn't been. Damn, breaking news. Producer Pat with the breaking news on proper box. Um, you, you, you probably listen to this about four days after this is happening, but just know that we are breaking that shit. Yeah. Joe oh, Biden. Pat's brother's news desk. <laughs> the, the 46th president of the Look, United my, States. My Look, girl, my girl, she's, she just texted me. Um, she just said, I just woke up because people are banging pots and pans and honking their horns. I was so confused. So I guess like everybody's like to celebrate, you know. What I'm saying? Damn, wow. Philadelphia, Philadelphia, putting in the last numbers. So that's breaking to me, even like yeah. that's. So this election's been going on for days. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in particular, was red at first, and then the mail-in ballots started to be tallied, and then we saw maybe two days ago that it flipped towards Biden. So with him getting this, it puts him over the 270 electoral college vote. Uh, are the uh, what was it the delegates or the electoral votes? Electoral yeah. college, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so wow. All That's right. Crazy. Look, is- hey, look, why, why I want you to know before we get into this, this this election, yo, was the first time I voted. I know, and I'm mad at you for it. <laughs> I'm mad at I'm- you know why? You know why? I've been hearing you complain for four years. <laughs> Little did I know you were a Trump supporter. Now you don't think you're a Trump supporter. You don't think you're a Trump supporter, but by not voting in the last election. That's how we got into this whole mess, Alan. Oh. People like you. Because Philly didn't Look, show up. It's your fault. Funny. I I'm I'm a man, right? And I'm so <laughs> I, I'm a man. So I can tell y'all, so I can be honest with y'all, it's all my fault. It's yeah. 100, 110% my fault. Last last election, Trump won Pennsylvania by by um 40,000 votes, right? Mm-hmm. And a hundred thousand black people didn't vote. Yeah. So I was a part of that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I understand the error of my ways. 
And like, I feel, I, I, I'm dead serious. Like, I even talked to my kids about it. My kids, I'm, I'm honest with them. They know I never voted. You know what I'm saying? And I explained to them why I did it. And I also explained to them why I am. Because I, I was wrong. Like, I was right. completely wrong. I thought that I was being um, self-centered. I was only thinking about myself. Like, I always base my happiness upon how I feel, like, just me. Like, how I, as long as I'm doing well and in my life and comedy, my kids are happy, my bills are paid, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't realize how much the presidency affected so many people that I was close to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that was didn't sit, sit well with me. So I was like, I got to do better for everybody. It's not just about me. You know what I'm saying? So... But mm. so that, that, and I also figured that my happiness was being affected when people around me weren't happy because of the president. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it like, feels yeah. very much like you know, like when the Eagles win. I was <laughs> like, oh, you know, I'm kind of whatever about it, but my uncle's pretty happy. That's nice. I'm glad there's a smile <laughs> on his face. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong, but I'm, I'm right now. I'm right now. Damn it! And I'm part. <laughs> yeah. I'm part of the. I'm part of the biggest turnout in history. Okay. Yeah. Damn, he feels proud about that he too. He really does. Alan's well, got I mean, an I voted sticker right now. <laughs> Alan is undefeated in elections, it seems. I'm assuming yes. that's who you yeah. voted for. I don't Listen, know. I voted for, I voted for Joe, I voted for uh, Joe Harris. Kamala Biden is who I voted for, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yeah. There were a lot of black men who voted for Trump, so I don't know where you voted. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro, listen, I, you hear, I complain, I talk about Trump a lot, I complain about a lot. I mean, I, I'm not, I'll never vote for nobody like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah nah, like, nah, I, I could never do it. I don't understand how people do. Honestly, now, you know. I'm sorry, I, didn't mean, I was very no, rude. I was, about to keep, I was about to keep ranting, but you can go ahead, Kirk. That's a uh, first of all, dog. It's your show. You can rant all you want. Uh, <laughs> so like, now, I'm something I'm curious with, like uh, the turnout. We're seeing a little more because um, around Wednesday, Thursday, we started to see it lean towards uh, Biden, um, and a lot of celebrations uh, occurred afterward. How do you guys feel in terms of how should people that support Biden, voters for Biden? How should they operate and treat those that voted for Trump? How should there be gloating? Should there be uh, some sort of uh, reservation? Uh, what's what's your take on that? In my personal, oh, in my personal opinion, right? I think one. Look, let me let me back up here. I, my feelings aside about you know you know the feelings towards those who actively supported uh, you know President Trump, are I feel like the biggest problem with his presidency was that he divided us as a nation. Like, I feel like he just sowed seeds of hate and, like, division. And I feel like when you do that and you divide the people, it's easy to, you know, like, pass policies that are favorable, you know what I mean, and stuff like and just do all this shady stuff. Yeah. So I think that the most important thing that Joe Biden can come in and do is try to unite us as, you know, as a country again. Like, it shouldn't be, you know, like, uh, we shouldn't have this, like, visceral hate of Republican versus Democrat, it should really be about electing the best person for office, you know, and ho somebody who is hopefully sensible and doesn't, you know, doesn't divide us. Because if we're not united as a country, that's just how we fall. And that's just my personal opinion. No, I, I, that's 100% true. I think, uh, you know, sensible, but also sensitivity to right. like when he first came out, um, when they were start, still tallying votes, um, he noted like, you know, I'm going to be I could be your president and I'm going to serve those that voted for me and those that didn't vote for me. And I think that's already a strong contrast from how uh, Trump's uh, kind of approach towards it, mm -hmm. which, you know, in my opinion was divisive. Um, so it's, I think we're definitely are split in a lot of ways. I was on uh, the show last week while well, I, I got spit at. Two yeah, weeks I heard that story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so like stuff like that, where it's like we're seeing more and more of those. I guess for me, as someone that won, I voted for Biden um, and happy that he won. I don't see the the benefit of rubbing it in so much because it seems like it's only going to fuel that right. divisiveness. Um, that said, people are human, and I get they're celebrating something that right. they held very important to them. So there's some leeway when it comes to that too. I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. So what, what do you consider rubbing in somebody's face? Like what we're not playing. It's not an NFL game. You're not like dancing in their face on the sideline. Like, ah, oh, interception. Like, bro, what? I just saw videos of Philly. They're literally dancing in their face. <laughs> 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 literally dancing. The face like they're doing the like choreographed dancing in their faces right now. It's Philly, though. It's Philly. <laughs> it's Philly. It's no, Philly. I mean, yeah, it's Philly no. Fire I know y'all like to do that. Y'all like to light stuff on fire. And it's still early. It's still early. Um, <laughs> so, so, like, give it some time. 
I'm sure Lancaster may pop off too. Um, oh, no. no, it's I don't I don't consider that necessarily gloating. Um, I I see a lot of in terms of like uh, the social media use um, and kind of like uh, you'll see back and forth with family members, which is already a silly bozo thing to do on both sides, I like to air that out on yeah. publicly. Um, but you see a lot of that where it's like, oh well, how could you do that? How could you vote for that person? You have to look them. I I, I, I part of me wants to hold back because it's I get where they're coming from. I just don't think it's really it's helping. I just don't like to see it. Maybe that's the best way to phrase it. I don't like to see it. I just heard cars riding down the block beeping and yelling out their window just now as you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so I'm pretty sure as people celebrating. Yeah, it broke like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, man. It's, uh, yeah, it's, that's a, I forget. You're like three hours behind us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about to be nine in the morning. People are still asleep here. <laughs> no one's up. That's yeah, so I'm not going to lie, man. I actually, I put a, like, even even last night, I put a video up on, on Instagram of, of, of me acting like Joe Biden when he flipped Georgia and Pennsylvania. <laughs> I saw that. I loved it. Yeah. With the, flip, with the little yeah. flip. I loved well, that the game over. Too. I sent that to yeah. my brother. He was like, <laughs> he's like, is that your property bonics, buddy? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so would you consider that gloating? Uh, that's more so just... I guess it just gloating is subjective because I see it as like, oh, Alan's doing his comedy thing, whatever. Yeah. Um, right. yeah, I guess just in terms of interactions, one-on-one interactions with people and all that stuff. And you know, you, you never want to celebrate too early. Now, obviously, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, he has one, but in terms of like things that people want to see get done, changes that we want to see happen, policies in place, you don't want to celebrate too early. I feel, well, I feel like just always have caution. A few things here. Number one is when I see gloating, I think of like you know, the flags in the back of tr- pickup trucks and, like, huge red hats everywhere. That's my... You know, yeah. Gloating. No, trust me. They were gloating going on for four years. Yeah. 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 No, America <laughs> saw gloating. Yeah, no, we saw it. But also keep in mind that this is far from over. Like, yes, he's been declared the president-elect, but you know that all of these things are going to be challenged. Uh, you know, Pennsylvania, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, there was a few things that could be perceived as shady. Whether they're shady or not, I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm not in the room. I don't know what's going on. But mm-hmm. this is going to get called up in court and they're going to re- try to recount Michigan and stuff like that. Like, ultimately, I think right. Joe Biden won this cleanly. At least I'd like to believe for the integrity of our democracy that he won this cleanly. But, yeah. you know what I mean? They're, 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 this, this is not over. This is probably going to leak until December. It's going to, yeah, it's going to definitely going to be challenged. I think one thing that people had uh, uh, some frets over is when um, uh, Judge Barrett was elected in Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, the power of the Supreme Court in terms of challenging mail-in ballots. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was something that was voiced that people would worry about. Um, I did like that the convention center in Philly had a live stream mm-hmm. of their voting center the whole time. Yeah. I thought that was kind of a cool thing to do. Yeah. But I- I'm not too up on what are some of the things that may have been shady because I've been hearing allegations from Trump and the Trump campaign, but it hasn't really been much evidence being state out is there anything big news so here's the thing right i yeah. i i normally okay first off i'm glad you guys have me on here because i was a political science major so i'm oh, finally yeah. glad i get to use my degree <laughs> here we are this is it this is what i went to school for finally <laughs> on property bonics yeah let's, let's do this um that's number one but number two and more importantly i think uh, i've been watching a lot of fox news lately why you ask because i turned on cnn and that, that announcement was just dry i was like yo you're just rambling on and i don't i don't need to hear this so I about john fox king news, Huh? Oh, John King? No, no, I don't know. Yo, shout to John King. But then when I went over to Fox, it was lit. Let me tell you, Fox News for this election, it was like watching a Smack DVD tape. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 and they were going, and I thought, I thought that Fox News was like pro Republican. Like that was my thought going right. into it, bro. When I tell you they were having like old school like '90s rappers beef with the Trump campaign the entire oh, time, and I was yeah. with it. Yeah, so, no, they've been beefing for whatever the, reason. The entire time, and I loved every second of it. Like, it started off with them calling Arizona uh, early. Yeah. Because Fox News was the first organization. They're like, yeah, Biden's campaign is taking Arizona, and Trump sounded like, what? Yeah, <laughs> AP <laughs> Press and Fox call? News for some reason. Yeah. They, and Google, like, he went on Google. It yeah. showed us 264 for, like, a whole week. Oh, no, absolutely. And the best part about that is I'm watching it, right? And the uh, advisor from the Trump campaign comes on and is like, how can you call it? You know, there's so many votes that haven't come in. How, how can you call it? And like Fox was like, uh, we have people, statisticians who do this for a living, you know, like they, they can kind of look into that. And I was just like, yo, y'all be like office polite. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when someone in the office goes, 
as you may have seen above, or you know what I mean? That's <laughs> from my last email. email. <laughs> like, that was kind of the vibe. <laughs> they cut back. No, my favorite is they cut back, and then they bring on, like, an expert. And, and the guy's like, so how'd you get these numbers? He goes, well, these aren't my numbers. This is just basic mathematics, you know, the way uh, we run these math. I'm just like, yo, y'all have no chill. It's and, like, we didn't do any long division or anything. We right. just, like, looked at the numbers. And, it's and clearly just, there. That's what it is. And then the other thing, and then like one of my favorite moments, one of my favorite moments is like, so they bring her on, right? And like the the anchor is sitting there and he goes, Okay, so you guys are claiming that uh, you know, that uh that, that there's uh that they're doing some illegal activity. So what kind of illegal activity the Trump campaign is like, yeah, you know, they have some dead people voting, they're doing this, they're doing that. And the and the guy goes, Okay, so you're saying that you should stop counting in Pennsylvania because there's a lot of stuff going. But you want us to start recounting in Arizona, which has already going blue. Like those two things don't seem to be, you know. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's like the key word, baseless, <laughs> when it comes to those. Um, and he, we saw with um, tr- well, for one, for those that didn't see, Trump declared victory the day of the election yeah. when he was in the lead, when the votes had not been completely tallied yet. Um, and I think we're seeing a lot. Of, it made sense because you know he didn't really necessarily encouraged too much for his uh, voters to do it through mail he That's did a few times That's but not thing. He on was the level biden yeah. he was complaining about that he was like i don't understand how none of the mail-in ballots are for, for, have my name on it i'm like you told people not to put your name on it like <laughs> like mm. what are you it doesn't make he didn't it was the dumbest thing i've ever seen he was he's like what don't you understand bro you're you're losing in the end with the the mail-in ballots because you were against them like, yeah, how are you guys feeling on Tuesday, like, when he was, like, in the lead? Like, when we were seeing those states turn red, even Pennsylvania and Ohio, I was like, oh. I, I was good. I was good, right? I was good in, until he, until Ohio turned red. Because at first, yeah. Biden Biden had Ohio, right? I was like, okay, he about to get Ohio. And then Trump won Ohio. I was like, oh, this ain't, this ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually took a different approach. Uh, like I mentioned, I, uh, I, I'm a political science major. I, went, I graduated from Stony Brook University. Shout out to the Stony Brook Seawolves. And, uh, Wolves? I don't know. and one, of our, uh, one of our professors, uh, Professor Northorp in the political science department, is one of the like, most regarded uh, people in the country when it comes to predicting elections. Oh. He was the first person to declare that Trump was going to win in 2016 before anyone else. Because there's like all these metrics. He has this model. like all these. Metrics I think. You have to I think Kid Rock predicted it. I don't. I don't know. Like if you were taught by Kid Rock or not, but I think Kid Rock, Kid Rock may have had a hand. <laughs> no, no, that. right. Yo, but that was later on after he had Norport's data. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, Just making sure. So no, but he like has all these metrics. Like if you win certain like uh, uh was it the preliminary races by a certain amount, then generally yeah. the, those trends tend to lead to a presidential life. So he had made his prediction again, and he's been right 91% of the time, Ooh. dating back to, like, the 60s. Wow. So, like, he's pretty accurate. So he had predicted that Trump was going to win again. So I kind of had gone into it with a, yeah, you know, Trump's going to win this election. It doesn't even matter kind of attitude. Huh. And then when I saw, like, Pennsylvania going red in all those, like, different counties, I was like, yeah, he already took Florida. He took Pennsylvania. And at the time, uh, Michigan and Wisconsin were red. And I was like, there's no way he's going to flip Wisconsin. Because I thought for sure – Wisconsin was going to go red considering that they stormed the uh, the state building. Do you guys remember that during COVID over not wearing masks? Yeah. Was that Wisconsin? Yeah, that was Wisconsin. I was like, if oh. these people are willing to storm a state building over not wearing masks, they're definitely not voting blue. Like, that's not going to fly. Yeah. I thought it was, it was Michigan, crazy. definitely, because I was like, oh, car industry. Oh, maybe uh, I'm wrong. I thought it was Wisconsin. I'm pretty sure. No, it was Wisconsin, but he's no, could have been saying he thought. He, he, what he, oh, he yeah, no, separately. Yeah, Michigan. Oh. No, when that, because that one was also red at the right. time as well. And I was like, "There's no, it. There's no way that's turning blue, but it did." And I was like, "That's pretty nice." So wait, yeah. this. So your teacher, uh, your professor, rather, predicted Trump to get it for this one again. Did he? Yes. Has have you spoken with him, or w- well, when did you realize there was going to be kind of a switch? He personally, uh, he wasn't my personal professor. He's a professor in the department. He was the head of the department. Okay. Um. Yeah, and y'all can fact check me on this, but I think it is like ninety-one percent or something like that that he was like uh, got. I have not spoken to them. I don't know, you know, what went wrong with the model, but I personally knew that like uh, it was a switch. Once I saw Michigan and Wisconsin flip, I was like, he doesn't even need Pennsylvania. Like okay. Pennsylvania yeah. could just screw us up again, and I don't care because all he needs is Nevada. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing, man. Listen, and I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, my my TV, 
I still got my TV on CNN right now, man. I ain't never watched CNN this much. <laughs> I learned. I have learned so much. You know John King's name? I was like, was it <laughs> yeah. the fact that you just dropped a John King reference. I, uh, I, I didn't know who he was before Tuesday. I've never even seen him. <laughs> oh, is he man. new? They, 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 no, they just man, hired he's him? been around for like three decades, bro. Like he's. Uh-huh. Good <laughs> I have no idea. I but he's I learned- a former football player too. At least he's built like a football player. I don't know. We gotta check I, that. I know one thing. They don't stop talking. It's <laughs> my magic marker. <laughs> yeah, man. man. No, I, I learned a lot, though, man. I'm glad. I'm. 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 I'm not. I would say I'm embarrassed. I haven't been in tune with politics, but I'm not because I don't give a fuck about that shit like that. But True. I, I kind of regret. <laughs> I regret not knowing about a lot of it. That's Girl, you're, you know, we're growing. I'm not embarrassed, but I, re- yeah. nigga, I learned about congressional. Di- you know what a congressional district is? I ain't never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of a congressional district. I had no idea states could have that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't know about provincial, provincial ballots, ballots nigga. and all that. How great would it be if it was like this the first time you learned about counties? <laughs> it's like, all right, Alan, you should know about. I think you should know that one. I think that's. This is the thing, though. I'm, I'm very, I'm very like, I, I, I really like social studies and geography. Like, I can tell you, you can give me a map of Pennsylvania, and I can probably fill in eighty percent of the counties. Like, I can really like, like, I really, I know all the state capitals. Like, I like that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I was intrigued when they put a map on TV. I was like, yeah, this is my, this is my shit right here. I like, yo, that. what's, what's <laughs> up with Lancaster being red? What's up with that? Oh, I don't even go, don't, don't tie me to that. You know what I'm saying? You know me. I, I, I did my, I voted Biden. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I live in Lancaster. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't. I don't know. They races out motherfucking like. <laughs> well, Alan, you should have right. voted more than once. That's all I'm saying. You should. <laughs> Did you see him trying to get you locked up, Alan? That's not a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Smith, I, I tell you. Anywho, if I, if I do, it's, it's, it, those be, it be your own friends. You know what I'm saying? Right. Be your own mm. <laughs> they don't want you to win. <laughs> um, uh, listen, we're about, we're about to dip out in a little bit because sure. um, I have things to do. Um, Alan, do we want to do some goals? Um, we can we can we can come up with some goals. Again, Let's pop it some goals. Yeah. Uh, so again, Juan, it's the same thing. We, every episode we give yeah. like, we give suggestions and we also give our goals. That it can be personal goals, um, goals as a as a uh, a podcast. Just yeah. just whatever. Like Kirk had a goal one time, to, like rescue a cat or some shit like that. Like what's yeah, it? he did. It was it was a kidnap a cat. So kind of yeah, and I didn't yeah. get to kidnap that cat, but <laughs> some goals we would meet, some goals we don't. Like one of our first goals of the year was to put together a show we are able to do that um and some goals you know you know we're not perfect but yeah. we want to present to people with goals and kind of set ourselves uh to a certain standard and expectation so right it could be any goal we're gonna break in some goals let's do some goal music goals. my goal you know you know people are if you're watching the youtube feed of this and we recommend it um if you're watching youtube feed of this you notice that um i shaved my mustache uh, so I have just like a, a beard going on, uh, no mustache. Doc, I think it looks great. Um, and I'm not saying that to hype myself up. I'm just saying because everyone I know when I last time did this criticized me, like openly, like coworkers judge me for this. Uh, my family, people I love, they all tell me it look bad. Mm. I feel like I look like a brown wolverine right now. So my goal <laughs> is to really get this look going. Like I'm... I, I, yeah, like I've been shaving my mustache every morning. I'm like, all right, I kind of like this. I miss like being able to touch my face like that and all that. So I'm gonna get that going. All right, I'm gonna tell you this, Kurt. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was probably one of your coworkers, I, <laughs> bro. Yeah, you definitely did criticize it. Yeah, no, it was like you know, proper bonics was one of the first places I revealed it when I first did it a few months ago. And boy, oh boy, did I not I'm, like the feedback. I'm just not. Listen, okay, I'm. I, I I've learned. I've learned, right, that I shouldn't be like online or anywhere. I shouldn't be critiquing like women and what they do. Like I've 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 gone viral critiquing women. Like yeah. you I mean, you shouldn't wear fake eyelashes. Who the hell am I? Like I shouldn't <laughs> I shouldn't do stuff like that. Women but need I to get like, their cardboard boxes and be like, you need a vote, Alan. That's that's that's, a, that's how they should have countered it. <laughs> yeah, go uh, ahead. I, I, bubbles is luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I voted. But this this what I this what I wanted to say though, because you're my friend. And I value your opinion, and I hope you value mine. I think it looks creepy. What? I like the, I like the full thing, bro. I'm gonna tell you why. I think you look like like a man's man when you got the full beard, you got the hair, you got the lumberjack shirt on. You know what I'm saying? 
But when you, when you when you when you get rid of that little hair right there, you look like Homer Simpson or something. I now look like Homer Simpson. I now look like Homer Simpson. <laughs> this look. This is very- producer Pat. Producer Pat agrees. He said, "Full beard looks better on you." Like, well, I'm yeah, not saying- you know, maybe that's the goal <laughs> no. to kind of go away with any sort of criticism from other people. Let I me tell you something. Yeah, Don't listen up, to man? anyone whose beard doesn't connect. Do you, boo? <laughs> uh, <laughs> bro? Hold up! Don't come for me. You can't come for me, bro. What's up? <laughs> you got the five. O- you got the five o'clock shadow. Come on, man. You can't do that. <laughs> hey, man. But my my stuff connects. <laughs> yeah, listen, I have enough beard. I could donate bad. it to both of you. Um, <laughs> Listen, when you have a beard like this, you got to make some choices after yeah. a while. And yeah. yeah, that's some big beard choices I'm making. It's going to grow back. I have to do it every morning because it grows back so fast. I got a lot of testosterone. What's up? <laughs> yeah, so the goal is to get this going for like at least a month and see who yeah. gets jiggy with it. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think it looks fine. I, I'm going I'm to piggyback off your goal, man. I'm going to stop, I'm gonna stop criticizing, criticizing mm-hmm. you, Kirk. I'm going to stop, man. That's my goal. My goal, I'm trying to be better. <laughs> I want to be better, man. And I feel like I've learned a lot from this episode. I, I realized that <laughs> Dominicans aren't black. I learned that. Uh, I learned that. Not Kirk, all Dominicans. There are black Dominicans. Don't 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 just. Oh, so look, real real rap. I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. When yeah. I say things, when I say things like, "Yeah, Dominicans are black. They come from Africa." I'm not even thinking in my head about yeah. the the Asian Dominic, like the white. Now you know what I'm saying. The people that yeah. are Dominicans because they they live there, and I'm not even like my brain. Yeah. Like. It's, I don't think that. I don't think that, like, you know, I'm not thinking about the people that come there. I'm thinking about the people that originally were brought there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, That's what absolutely. I'm thinking about. So, yeah, I was, I was wrong. I'm not even computing other people. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah. That, was, that was wrong there. But it's a goal of mine. Like I said, yeah. I, I've learned, I have learned that I, when I critique women online, right, shit go viral. People love it because <laughs> men, are, men are misogynists, right? So they love right. it. But I realize that how wrong it is and how bad it is. I literally deleted all this shit. If you ever hear me talking about women negatively online, it's just deleted. You won't find yeah. it online. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's wrong. So the same thing with you, Kirk. Maybe the people that I, that I, that I, that I <laughs> fuck with in there. You know what I'm saying? I don't, wanna, I don't want you to feel bad about your, your, your naked lip. I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, just, on, so I'm maybe my goal lip. is to be... So stop being so judgmental. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'm being judgmental because these parts don't connect. Uh-huh. Correct. Maybe I got to do some, some soul searching on the inside, Brett. Well, I, I appreciate it, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm just shooting. I'm just shooting. I'm just trying to be better, man. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you can do. <laughs> um, hey, what you got, Juan? So, can I get two goals? Yes. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah. First and foremost, uh, my uh, my more serious goal is uh. I was, you know, like I, uh, I actually, I was listening to you guys last week, like I said, and uh, I used to do squats because uh, I have a flat butt, and I was hoping <laughs> to get a big butt. Yeah, and, uh, try to get that ass going. I squatted for nine and a half months, co- close to a year. My butt was equally as flat, but I did get more muscular, so that was, that was oh. cool, but I, I still had no butt. So okay. my first goal is, uh, um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm engaged. I'm getting married in a year. My first goal is actually to drop uh, 50 pounds and, uh, or not necessarily 50 pounds, but like, you know what I mean? Get to 12% body fat and become yeah. more muscular than I am fat and, you know, try to look well for, uh, for the big day. So that's, that's my first goal. Oh, bro, you got to get look nice for those photos. You got to get a nice big butt for those photos, bro. <laughs> bro, I've been trying. Bro, you know what I was doing? I even got the little foam roller and I was doing, you, you know, those ones where you like air hump yeah. the air to try to get like, you Trust know, your, me, your boots know. Bro, Yeah, you nothing. do them without the roller too. <laughs> nothing. Bro, I try yeah. everything. My butt just doesn't grow. I, I'm not built that way. I'm telling you, I'm mixed. So those are my white jeans kicking. In. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? This nigga, this nigga in his living room doing front lunges trying to get a booty. <laughs> yeah, bro. It'd be yo, like you, that, dog. It's the, not the key, yo, seriously, the key with a lot of those, uh, tighten your abs when you're doing them. The core okay. is really key. Tighten your abs. And also, I find this helps, Kegels before and after each workout. Okay. It really tones well, it in. It'll make my butt bigger. No, but it will like tighten the core a little bit and it'll just make you a little more flexible and give you more endurance to do more exercising. And also it's just a good thing to do. Shout out to like, you know, colon checks and all that. For, for, right. Look, before, before you give it to, to the next one, for a lot of guys listening, they do um, associate Kegels with the women's vagina exercise. Oh, no. So people, but people, a lot of guys do, but a lot, of, a lot of ladies also don't even notice that men, we do have the same muscle. The same muscle mm-hmm. that we use to make our thing jump is the yeah. same muscle that women use to do Kegels. So a lot of people don't know that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Bro, my Kegel's popping off right now. Also, <laughs> wow, wow. Also, a lot of people don't know that Kegels are good for you if you're a guy because it helps you last longer. Fun fact. 
Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah, listen, if you have delayed ejaculation, do not do Kegels. Do not have her waiting an extra hour. Uh, <laughs> people get tired after a while. Yeah, um, and yeah so, uh, so there's that. My second goal is, I, after watching the, uh, the election stuff all week, you know, I've learned a lot about like, you know, our political system. Like I said, I was a political science major. But more than anything, I've learned how uh, overpaid our uh, senators and our, uh, our Congress people are and how well, you know, their health packages. So I'm officially announcing it here. I'm proper Ebonics, Juan Carlos, uh, running for House Congress 2026. Y'all heard it here first. Oh, Let's go. Let's wow. get it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> get that. Get them health benefits. That's right. what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> That's Damn. what I'm saying. Damn, you got, a, news. <laughs> you got a busy next two years for you getting you married. Well, you got your butt popping. So I'm pushing it off. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, cool. We got, we got some time with it. All right. You know what I mean, cool. I got to clean up my social media because, you know, and there's a few people who, you know, I need to pay off first. So, you know, it's a process. <laughs> you can't do that right away. Yeah. Well, we're we're going to support you here, even from the <laughs> East Coast and all that stuff. Uh, Juan, it's been great having you on, man. It's been nice yeah. meeting you too through this. Um, do you have anything you want to promote or let people know about? Sure, sure. Absolutely. Uh, again, um, first and foremost, you guys can follow me on Juan Carlos Comedy across everywhere, you know, uh, Facebook, Instagram. But also, you know, if you if you want to check out the Revisionary Podcast, please come check it out. It's dope. Uh, like I said, Alan has been a guest. We've had a yeah. I had of a lot of, I had a lot of fun, man. I had a lot of yeah, fun yeah. on that. So yeah. please just check Revisionary. it out. Revisionary. And they can find that on Spotify, iTunes, all the platforms. Yeah, Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you listen to uh, podcasts, we're there solid solid uh well good stuff uh you two enjoy your weekend i guess and enjoy new president yeah that's right? cool <laughs> <laughs> so i'm about to i'm about to go out there with my girl and celebrate she just sent me a video of her banging on a pan in a park <laughs> she, she, she in prospect she in prospect park in brooklyn right now banging on pans with white people i'm gonna <laughs> right, get that on video <laughs> all right well i'll catch you guys around peace all right, later. appreciate you